Hi folks, um, so in this video what we're going to do is we're going to complete this development question here based on this object. So it says here, the figure shows the bucket of a toy mechanical digger. A 3D graphic is also shown. Okay, so you can see the 3D video, or sorry, image here with the measurements. And we've got another pictorial view of it down here. What we have to do is part A, draw an elevation in the direction of arrow A. So our elevation is pointing to the right. So it's going to go on the right hand side of the page. And then we have to do part B, a plan projected from the elevation. We know the plan always goes underneath the elevation. And then part C, the surface development of that. So I'm going to keep it on the right hand side because I'm going to have to develop it out okay, later on. So starting off, what is the overall height of the object? It's uh, 75 high. Okay, or sorry, it's 70 high because the radius is 35. That means the distance from here to here is 35. And here to here is 35, making the overall height 70. Okay, so my height is 70. What's my length? My length is 70 here, from here to here. And then obviously add on the radius, 70 plus 35 would be 105. And then what's my width? My width is 60. So there's kind of my like three measurements there, okay? Normal orthographic projection. So what I want to do is, I'm actually going to keep it down here on the page. So I'm gonna start off with an XY line. We'll keep it on the right hand side of the page. X, Y. Now, first of all, I'm going to create a box for everything to fit inside. It's going to be 105 long. So 10.5 from 0 to 10.5. And I'm going to measure from here then 70. Just have that one put in. Okay. The height of the box is going to be a height of 70 as well. You can see there, ever so lightly, putting in those lines. Zero up to seven. So there is everything for the elevation is going to fit in there. Now I'm going to set up the plan view. It's usually the plan we know is always projected down below it. Okay, I'm going to keep a gap of about 10 millimeters to my plan. And then from there, what's my width? My width is 60, so I'm gonna measure down 60. Everything from my plan view is gonna fit inside of that box, elevation here. So let's get started on the elevation. Now, first of all, I'm gonna put in the semicircle and then I'm gonna put in the triangular portion. So I've already measured over a distance of 70 here, which we have over here from the edge. So 70 millimeters from there to there. So I'm going to start by putting that in ever so lightly. That line has gone in there. I know this line now can connect up to here. I'll actually be careful of that. Sorry, it's a back distance. You'll see here there's a distance of 10 millimeters back before that starts. Because there's obviously all the teeth on the digger. So I measured back 10 there and from here now, connect that up there just be careful of something like that they might catch you out there on that little bit there and then I want to put in the semicircle so it's a height of 70 the diameter of 70 the radius is obviously 35 mark it into there I'm going to do a very light line there I'm using my compass now center point here radius out to here Always just check it beforehand that everything's matching up. Happy with that, yeah. Happy with that. Happy with that. And obviously, I'm using a pen. You'll be using a pencil. Just be careful. So there is the elevation completed. Now what I want to do is I want to complete the plan. So to complete the plan view, what I'm going to do is, obviously, what would I see when I look down top of it? I'm going to transfer down any lengths that I have. And then obviously I've got a section in here where it goes 10, 15, 10, 15, 10. So I'm going to put those in. The lights are just going to go out in here, guys, so I'm just going to have to get up for a second. Go. So I've obviously got a series of lengths, or sorry, widths, 10, 15, 10, 15, 10. So I'm just going to put those in. 10 plus 15 plus the 10. Close to 15. Put in 
this long house house and house once again having in the detail that is relevant to the question this portion okay And then just having in this section here, which is obviously where the teeth part are. Okay, so as you can see there, we have now heavied in the elevation and we have heavied in the plan. We have part A done and part B done. What's the last part we have to do? Part C, the complete surface development of it. So first of all, let's look at the object here. There is, if I'm to break it up into surfaces, okay, I'm going to connect a line, a light line, in there like that between the two center lines there so what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to break it up into kind of it's actually kind of got one two it's actually only got three surfaces you've got the side face here where the bucket is you've the other side face and then you've actually this face which curves around on itself what i've kind of done though is i've divided it into the flat portion and then the curved portion so it's kind of got four portions so what we're going to do now, first of all, is we're going to start off by drawing the flat portion, and then we're going to develop out the side, the side, and then we will do the curved portion at the end. So starting off with the flat portion, okay, I've already got the width here from my plan view, so I'm going to bring that out like this, ever so lightly. Starting off here, I'm going to start it out here. Okay. Now, what is the distance from here to here, which is the flat portion? We know it is 70. So from here, I'm going to mark over a distance of 70. Mark the 70, pop that in. So what I'm just going to say inside there is flat surface. You don't have to write that. Am I missing the teeth from it? Yes, I am. But because I've already got those measurements in, I'll just... Bring them across like that, just to give me a rough guide on where they are. There's no point measuring again when we already have it done. And then the distance, once again, that gap there was 10. So I'll mark in the 10 from the corner, back to zero. And there we have it. There is the flat portion done on one side. Okay, sorry, the flat portion done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add on, if you imagine this face here at the side and it was to fold down, Flat, it would attach on right there so that would happen at both sides so that semi-circle that I'm going to have to do I'm going to have to extend out this edge here and this edge going up here I'm going to have to measure a distance so I'm going to take my radius from here which is 35 it's already done from here I'm going to mark that hopefully it stays on the page and from here I'm going to mark it because that's going to tell me my center point and you'll see up here now, there's one semicircle. Hopefully, this one fits in just about on the page. Almost just went off it at the bottom. Just have to pull this down a little bit further so you can see that more clearly. You can see it just about fitted. Okay, and now I'll extend those lines down a little bit further there. And extend them up here and what I want to do is now connect those edges up so that's actually going to connect to here and this one will connect to here okay so now I've got a side and a side now just to start giving the drawing a little bit of definition I'm going to start putting in a little bit of detail Heavy in the lines that are important. This is drawing. So I'll have a heavy line here. This will actually be a dotted line. Heavy line. Heavy. And finally then. Heavy. 
Okay. Get these heavy ones in as well. And what I want to do now, just using my compass, just heavy in the curve a little bit more. Neatness and presentation is always important. Okay, so now we've done the flat portion. The last bit we have to do is the curved portion. So for anyone who's done this in class before, what you're going to have to do is, in whatever view you have from your orthographic views over here, you're going to have to break up the view where you see a circle, semicircle, or a quadrant into 30, 60 degrees. So using the center point here, I'm going to go 60 degrees down. I'm then going to go 30 degrees through the middle like that. I'll go 30 degrees the opposite way. Always through the center point. And then finally, at 60 degrees going upwards. Okay. I'll just put in this as well. So it's like I'm after breaking up my semicircle into six pizza slices. I'm going to call this one number one, number two, number three, four, five, six, all the way to seven. So starting at number one, you can see one would be connected down here. Okay. So there is number one. Okay. That point right there. But what I want to do is I want to take the distance, the closest accurate distance. We can't obviously measure a curve, okay, using a ruler, but we can take the distance between the pizza slices. So I'm going to take the closest accurate distance between one to two, which will be the same as two to three, three to four, and so on. So from one, I'm going to step it out until it gets to number seven. So there's one to two, which will be the same as two to three, three to four, four to five five to six, and finally six to seven. Okay, for the purpose of the explanation, I'm going to number them and index, index them as well. Okay, and at the seventh one, that's where the number seven is. If you were just to sketch those in over here, it's like you'd have pizza slices like this. Okay, where you had number one here, two, three, four, five, six, and then finally seven. So at the seventh one, that's where it finishes, and it connects up with these points here. So at the seventh one, heavy in this line, heavy in this, and heavy in this. Okay, and what we have there in this section is the curved surface. We know in any cylindrical curved surface, when it folds out, it will fold out flat, almost in a rectangle. Now, there is no edge here, so you do not have to actually put in a dotted line in there. There's just a dotted line here and a dotted line here. Some people might make a mistake assuming that there is a dotted line there, but because there is no definitive edge, like there is between this edge, sorry, the side and the flat surface, where we put one in here, you do not have to put one in here. Okay, that is the question done, guys, okay? That there is a nice little development question showing you how to put in a curved surface there, and obviously we had the two awkward side surfaces as well. I hope you found that helpful.